What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina and we are on video three of our short series of planning dives. And we're at the equipment stage now and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna set up my equipment to meet what I need for this particular dive. Now in the first video we talked about we was going to 100 feet. We wanted to maximize our bottom time so we chose a 34% enriched air nitrox blend which gave us a maximum bottom time of 30 minutes. In video number two, based off that 30, minute bottom time we chose the steel 100 cylinder to give us the adequate amount of air based off the rule of thirds and then still have some plus we cho chose it based off our geographical location and the steel 100 beat out the 80 if you will simply because it's a little bit heavier and since i'm going to be using a dry suit in this particular dive i went with the steel 100 to give me that extra bit of weight so now with my current setup here i'm not going to get into the debate whether den's better yoke's better because they both have their pros and cons uh, i will say for this particular scenario i'm using a den on my primary setup and i have a yoke on my pony setup as well now from the second video we were able to determine i didn't necessarily need the pony however my personal rules are as follows. Anytime I'm in an overhead environment, if I'm say in a limited viz or not diving situation, if I'm doing a working dive such as a public safety or a salvage dive, or anytime that I go deeper than a depth of 60 feet, I always carry a redundant air source whether I need it or not. So that's why I chose to go with a pony here as well. Whether you choose to sling the pony or wear it on your back is completely up to you. Once again, I have my personal rules for that. For this particular dive though, I'm going to choose to sling the bottle. Now, one thing that you notice is it is on my left hand side I would encourage you to wear it wherever you feel the most comfortable the reason I choose to sling on my left hand side is simply because it doesn't get in the way of my actual regulator so my second stage that I breathe off of or my alternate for you know whatever emergencies it's not getting in my way of getting to those hoses in one way shape or form I do like it on my left hand side based off consistency alone when I side mount dive if I'm only a single tank side mount situation my primary primary cylinder is of course here on my left hand side and I'm used to having to pull that hose up or whatnot so it's always there and that's why I choose that. I will state this as well when I ice dive or if I'm doing public safety work or even salvage work for that uh, argument I always put my pony on my back and it actually goes on my right hand side. Now the reason I do that once again is because of consistency. Anytime I'm in a situation like that, I typically don't have my alternate as part of my primary rig system. My alternate is actually my alternate air source system. And instead of uh, slinging the cylinder or looping my hose into the bungees, it actually comes under my arm and hangs on a necklace just like my alternate does. So it's still consistent with that single tank back mount situation. But in this particular dive, I'm going to a pony system on my left hand side. I personally prefer 30 cubic feet. You may dive with a 40 or a 13 or a 19 or whatever you choose to dive with, but 30 seems to work best for me for adequate amount of air safe from 100 foot to the surface. Now, all that being said, let's look at how I've got it set up for this particular dive to 100 feet for a maximum bottom time of 30 minutes. Of course, I've got my cylinder of choice, which was the Steel 100. Now, I did go with my cold water reg system simply because I know I'm going into colder water. My BC of choice is my backplate and wing. I really love diving with a backplate and wing, but there's a specific reason I chose it for this dive. Since I'm going to 100 foot here in our lake and the water temperature is usually between 43 and 45 degrees, that automatically tells me I'm going to be using a dry suit. And with a dry suit using a Steel 100, I need around 11 pounds of weight to help get me down. With that being said, my steel back plate is about five pounds and then I have six pounds of lead in trim pouches on the back side. Now one thing I will state, this is a balanced rig. Simply put, I can swim up from any given depth based off what that dive is without needing to ditch weight. Now I do encourage you to always dive with ditchable weights, but if you're in a balanced situation, as you use up air out of your cylinder, you're going to be losing a little bit of weight, so that will help you during the ascent phase during an emergency. So with a balanced rig 11 pounds is all I need at a hundred foot in 34 degree water using my dry suit this works out great I have a five pound steel plate and I have two three pounders one in each trim pouch to balance me out around that 11 pounds now, as far as how I set up my gear, it may be a little bit different from you as far as what clip systems. I personally prefer my alternate to be hanging around my neck. It's pretty much how I dive all my setups, whether it's technical diving, recreational diving, public safety, it doesn't really matter to me. I like my alternate around my neck. As far as my right hand side here, I do carry a spare flashlight and it's simply bungeed off. I've got another video. I'll try to put it down in the description below if you can, uh, if you want to go watch it to show you how to clip off your flashlight so that you don't have a dangling 
or any danglies, if you will. Also have a spare double ender just for uh, whatever I need for working purposes as well. Here on my right hand side, if you can see it, this is where I keep my SMB and my reel, and it's just clipped off to my right D-ring. So when I come up to do my safety stop, I can actually shoot the buoy as well. It's not getting in the way, it's not dangling down below me, it's actually tucked up here behind. And also here on my right hand side, I've got a 50 pound lift bag. Now I use it for redundancy, redundancy as well as far as buoyancy, but I also have it because I do a lot of salvage work anytime I'm wearing a, a backplate wing and it's a great place to stow it as well. Now here on my left side, I always carry EMT shears with me and every BCC or BCD system I've got, I actually wear my shears in the exact same place simply for consistency. I do have a backup cutting tool. It's here on my uh, left hand side of my waist strap as well. And of course, I'm just using a single pressure gauge as well. Uh, I do dive with the computer, but primarily I only dive with computer on my wrist. Now in a public safety situation, I dive an air integrated computer on the console simply because I can download everything into one file for courtroom purposes. But for this particular dive, a single pressure gauge is all that I'm gonna go with. Once again, my pony of choice is the 30 cubic foot cylinder. Um, and of course it's pressurized to 3000 PSI. I've just got a 15X here mounted on it as my pony rig just a single second stage and I do also have a pressure gauge as well so I can monitor how much gas is in it now typically speaking with stage cylinders what we would do is actually pressurize that cylinder and then turn it off that way the lines are pressurized but we don't run the risk of actually losing air anytime I sling a pony I actually leave it on it at all times so right before I make my uh, descent down or I actually make my entry in the water I go ahead and turn my pony on and leave it on throughout the dive with me being able to sling it the way I do, I can actually see if there's any leaks, so I'm not too worried about that. I also have a pressure gauge here to be able to monitor that gas at all times, so I'm not really worried about losing gas throughout the dive because I can see it. When it's on my back for public safety purposes, it's kind of the same way. It's kind of like back mounted doubles. Both of them are turned on at all times. Now, if I'm doing technical dives, of course, my stage bottles or my deco bottles, they are pressurized, but they're actually turned back off. That way the lines are pressurized, no water can come into the system, but yet I don't lose gas at the same time. But in this particular situation, the tank is turned on. That way, if there's an emergency, I don't have to worry about turning it on. I can simply go to the gas supply or hand it off to a buddy as well. But guys, this third part of the planning series is gear configurations, how we set it up. I've got everything set up for me to work best for the particular dive that I'm doing. Your gear setup may be a little bit different based off your tank size, based off how many tanks you use, or based off what the dive itself is. Now, I'm just going 100 foot in the lake. I'm not going to be penetrating anything. So I'm not really worried about just a traditional setup, if you will. If I was making penetrations, I would probably be in double aluminum 80s in a side mount configuration. I'd have one long hose, one short hose, but I'm not really doing that. For this particular dive, this is going to be the best setup for me for the dive that we planned on. Guys, I hope you liked this video. I hope you see just how easy it is to plan your dives. Plan them using the computer or the tables based off your SAC and RMV rate, determine what cylinder is gonna work best for you. And then in the third part, plan what equipment that you need best. Now, some of the things that we didn't talk about is an emergency action plans and all that. All I'm trying to get you to do is understand you can sit down every single dive you make and actually plan it out. The last bit of advice I'll give you is log your dive dive. Write every bit of information down before the dive and log everything after dive. Your sack rate may actually change. Maybe you had too much weight. Maybe based off what I'm wearing didn't work for you. Write down what works for you based off your dive. Maybe you were kicking harder. You may need to actually change fins now that you're using this gear. Maybe you need to change suits. Maybe you're going too deep and it's too cold and you need to add a dry suit. Write all that information down so you can make better decisions in the future of your dives. Guys, if you got any questions, please put it down in the comment section below. All I want to do is show you how easy it is to plan your dives. If you're making the same dive over and over and over, you don't necessarily have to go through this process every single time. If you've got that information wrote down, simply walk over, pick up a tank, fill it with a compressor, throw it in your gear, and go diving. However, if you're making new dives, this is a simple, easy procedure, step one, step two, step three, and we've made you three different videos. If you want to review those videos, I'll have them down in the description below, and I'll I'll probably have them pop up here or there as well. You can simply watch those videos as well. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video or this series of videos. I hope you found it very interesting, very educational as well. Once again, any questions, please put it down in the comment section below. As always, guys, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, 
We appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.